In this section, we will explore the major chemistry foundations that will help us with our discussions of biochemistry. Recall that major intermolecular forces between molecules includes ionic interactions, where fully charged ions are attracted to each other, dipole-dipole interactions, where partial charges from one molecule that have permanently formed in covalent bonds due to the unequal sharing of electron pairs are attracted to partial charges from another molecule, and London dispersion forces, which form momentary dipoles that are created in covalent bonds that share electrons more equally. Hydrogen bonding is a special form of dipole-dipole interaction that is stronger than other common dipoles. This occurs between a partial positive charge that forms on hydrogen when it's covalently bonded to nitrogen or oxygen in biological systems and is attracted to a partial negative charge of an oxygen or a nitrogen atom from another molecule or bond. Let's consider mixing a hydrophilic molecule, water, with permanent hydrogen bonding dipoles and a hydrophobic molecule, oil that only has London dispersion forces. The nonpolar molecules of the oil don't really interact with the water. They are not strong enough to disrupt the normal hydrogen bonding of the water. In fact, around each nonpolar molecule, water gets very organized, aligning itself regularly. This would cause entropy to decrease, causing the temperature delta S term of the Gibbs free energy equation to become positive, a negative of a negative. Since the mixing of a nonpolar substance with water doesn't generally have any significant heat component, the overall delta G is positive. This means then that dissolving a nonpolar compound in water is not favorable and does not occur to any significant extent. The oil stays separate from the water. Further, when the nonpolar material associates with itself and not the water, the water molecules are free to mix without being ordered, resulting in an increase of entropy. Entropy, therefore, drives the separation of nonpolar substances from aqueous solutions. Since we know that fatty acids dissolve in water, there must be something else at play. Just like the nonpolar molecules in the first example associated with each other and not water, so too do the nonpolar portions of the soap ions associated with each other and exclude water. The result is that soap ions arrange themselves as micelles. Interactions with water also help to drive the formation of the lipid bilayer and the folding of proteins and other biological molecules. The importance of hydrogen bonds in biochemistry is hard to overstate. Linus Pauling himself said, I believe that as the methods of structural chemistry are further applied to physiological problems, it will be found that the significance of the hydrogen bond for physiology is greater than that of any other single structural feature. We are, after all, about 70% water. In the body, it forms the biological solvent in which all molecules must move through. Water can ionize to a slight extent, 10 to the negative 7th molar, to form protons and hydroxide ions. We measure the proton concentration of a solution with pH, which is the negative log of the proton concentration. If the proton concentration equals 10 to the negative 7th, then the pH is 7. We could just as easily measure the hydroxide concentration with the pOH by this parallel equation. In pure water, dissociation of a proton simultaneously creates a hydroxide. So, the pOH of pure water is 7 as well. This also means that the sum of the pH and the pOH equals 14. The presence of acids or bases within a solution can therefore have profound effects on the pH of a system. Thus, the importance of buffers within biological systems 
that can stabilize solution pH is critical for maintaining life. Within biological systems, weak acids often behave as this buffering system. Students are often puzzled and expect that the concentration of the protons will equal the concentration of the conjugate base because the disassociation equation shows one of each from the acid. This is in fact true only when the acid is allowed to dissociate in pure water. Usually the acid is placed into solution that has protons or hydroxides to affect things. Those protons and or hydroxides change the protons and the conjugate base concentration unequally since the conjugate base can absorb some of the protons and or the acid can release protons when influenced by the hydroxide in the solution. Therefore, one must calculate the proton concentration from the pH using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Recall that the Ka is the acid dissociation constant and is a measure of the strength of an acid. For a general acid, HA, which dissociate to a proton and the conjugate base, then the Ka is equal to the concentration of the products of the dissociated acid over the reactants or the concentration of acid. Thus, the stronger the acid, the more protons that will dissociate from it when added to water and the larger the Ka value. Large values of Ka translate into lower values of pKa. As a result, the lower the pKa value for a given acid, the stronger the acid is. Let's get back to buffers. A buffer is a solution that can resist pH change upon the addition of an acidic or basic component. It is able to neutralize small amounts of added acid or base and thus maintain the pH of a solution relatively stable. It is essentially a substance that can act as both an acid or a base depending on the circumstance. This is important for processes and reactions which require specific and stable pH ranges. In biological systems, Maintaining pH values is critical for maintaining life. The normal physiological pH of mammalian arterial blood is strictly maintained at 7.40. A decrease of more than 0.05 units from the normal pH results in acidosis. Now how does this translate into stabilizing pH? Figure 1.34 shows a titration curve. In this curve, the titration begins with the conditions at the lower left, very low pH. At this pH, the bicarbonate form predominates. But as more hydroxide is added, the pH goes up, and the amount of hydrogen carbonate anion goes up correspondingly. The amount of bicarbonate goes down. Notice that the curve flattens near the pKa of 6.37. Flattening of the curve tells us that the pH is not changing much, not going up as fast as it did earlier with the same amount of hydroxide was added. The system is resisting change in pH, not stopping the change, but slowing it. In the region of about one pH unit above and below the pKa. Thus, the buffering region of the carbonic acid bicarbonate buffer is from about 5.37 to 7.37. It is maximally strong at the pH of 6.37. This is consistent with the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation and the titration curve. If a buffer has more than one pKa, then each pKa region will display this behavior. Another key chemistry area that you will need to review is basic organic chemistry, as all biological molecules are organic in nature. Thus, it is very useful to have a good working vocabulary for naming common organic functional groups, being able to identify these groups from larger molecular structures, and understanding the common reactions for the major functional groups, especially the reactivity of carboxylic acids and amines. You should be able to identify the major functional groups on the next two slides. 
Nitriles are rare and are the least important. All of the major macromolecules are put together using dehydration synthesis. The two major macromolecules that we'll focus on this term are the proteins and the nucleic acids, DNA and RNA. The major dehydration synthesis reactions for each of the major macromolecules is noted here. They are all related to the formation of the ester bond with the loss of the hydroxyl from the carboxylic acid functional group and a proton from the alcohol donor. The oxygen from the alcohol mediates attack on the carbonyl carbon and the alcohol functional group of the carboxylic acid is displaced to form the water molecule. This reaction requires the activity of an enzyme. For proteins and nucleic acids, the reactions are similar. However, in the case of proteins, the amine nitrogen mediates attack on the carbonyl carbon of the carboxylic acid to displace the alcohol from the carboxylic acid and release the water molecule. This forms an amide linkage between the two amino acids. For nucleic acids, the phosphoric acid functional group is used instead of carboxylic acids, which will form the phosphoester linkages inherent to the DNA and RNA backbones. Two phosphoester linkages, a phosphodiester, are required to link two nucleotides together. In the next section, we will discuss the foundations of evolution and genetics before we begin to explore biochemistry in detail.